The stolen land is the fact. So uh, we don't want to promote any racism. You're not Canadian. This is the most passive aggressive weak uh, type of uh, display of questioning of leadership that I've ever seen. You'd have to be living under a rock right now to not be aware of the monumental tailspin that the Liberal Party happens to be in right now. But there is in fact a tragedy attached to it and it affects all Canadians, not just Liberal supporters. I swear I'm not joking when I say that. But given that we're about to dive into a somewhat heavy subject, I just want to lighten things up a bit first and show you a video which is lighthearted from the Twitter account Autism Capital. <laughs> Check this out. Hopefully that gave you guys a bit of a giggle to loosen things up, so let's get into the matter at hand. It's very public knowledge that the Liberals are at their absolute weakest right now. Now if you thought the Liberals were already lame when they were healthy, you're going to be shocked at the footage that you see today showing just how bad their disintegration is affecting Canada. And all this harm ties into one single factor. Immigration. So let's begin by talking about Mark Lucky Charms Miller, who went on the CBC yesterday and called the dissenting MPs on his team entitled and passive aggressive for speaking out against his dear leader. Uh, Dan Vandell has uh, has said he will not run again. Uh, long time uh, MP out of St. Boniface. Uh, but there's also a lot of us people talking about why. And there's a number of your colleagues, at least 20 elected representatives now, who've, who've signed this document circulating among your fellow Liberals uh, that are not in support of Justin Trudeau's leadership. Where do you stand on Justin Trudeau? Look, I wouldn't mix the, the, the departures of the, those ministers with uh, Fair enough, yeah. with, with the other situation. Dan is, uh, has been an exceptional friend and colleague, uh, particularly in my pre previous file with Indigenous issues. Um, I'll miss him, but he's doing it for very personal reasons, and, and it, it, I think he would be the first to be shocked if it were... Uh, suggested it was out of question of loyalty to the Fair Prime enough. Minister because so he's an outstanding guy. So I I, look, I, 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 I'm pro I, given given my my position as a minister, given my my proximity to the Prime Minister, I'm probably not the first pe person that people come to if they're if they're pissed off at the Prime Minister. Um, my own personal reflection on this, without knowing exactly who may or may not have signed a letter that may or may not exist, uh, is that this is the most passive aggressive week. Uh, type of uh, display of questioning of leadership that I've ever seen. Uh, the Prime Minister uh, is colleagues with these individuals, if they are indeed in the numbers that are speculated to be. They owe it to him to go up and tell it to his face. And anyone that's come up to me with any issues with respect to the Prime Minister and said, you got to do this and you got to say this, just say it to his face. Uh, he's an open guy. He, uh, he, he, he got them where they are today for the most part. Um, and they owe it to him to say things to his face. And I think he, he would fundamentally respect that. If they're fearful, that's a reflection on, on them uh, and their own leadership in their communities. This, is, um, this internal stuff happens. We've always encouraged a party that can speak out uh, and quite harshly against each other at times, but actually to keep it private. And at the end of the day, it makes this group of people look horribly entitled and worried about their own, uh, their own futures. Say it, say it to your face, let's clear it up and, uh, and let's focus on the bigger threat, which is uh, what we're currently doing, which is sleepwalking into a, a Pierre Polyev win who is uh, only focused on himself and doesn't really care about this country. I know, say what you want about Justin Trudeau, um, he fundamentally cares about this country and he's going to fight for everyone. Never mind that as immigration minister, Mark has far bigger fish to fry. Like this, for instance. Watch as you see a woman in a brown jacket running alongside the moving shuttle bus with a massive group of bus users chasing down the bus in an attempt to board it. In response to the scene at the Franklin LRT station, Calgary Transit says in a statement, as soon as we are made aware of a situation, Calgary Transit promptly deploys shuttles to assist customers. In this case, 13 shuttles have been deployed. Transit ambassadors are also on site, helping customers with wayfinding and directing them to the shuttles. During the mad rush to catch a bus, this man says this is something he's seen before. Oh, I, I am in my homeland like this. Yeah. <laughs> Does it remind you of your homeland? Where's your homeland? Punjab. And this is like this? Yeah. <laughs> 
While I've never traveled to India, I've visited other third world countries and what you saw in that video just now, that is not exclusive to India. That behavior, it's a symptom of poverty and that poverty is a symptom of ignorance and that ignorance just perpetuates the cycle of poverty until of course they bring it here to Canada and it becomes part of our norm. And that's exactly what it's becoming. This was never a problem in Canada before, but with this massive influx of unchecked, uncontrolled mass immigration, what you saw in that video is rapidly becoming daily life in Canada's cities. And it's only gonna keep getting worse until Mark Miller realizes that his job is not to chase after dissident liberals, but to fix the problem that he and his predecessors have caused in the area of immigration. Of course, if he were to do anything like that, he would be met with a lot of resistance. Check out what our so-called guests here have to say about Canada when they come to realize that they can't stay here. The stolen, the stolen land is the fact. So. La we don't want to promote any racism and the hatred, so that's okay. why we removed that one. But you're saying Canada is built on stolen land? No, no, it's the fact. Yeah, it's uh, every, everywhere. It's the written, like the uh, how it came. You uh, as well. You, I think you know as well. Okay. So for the hatred, like people are hating, like uh, from the road every day, like four to five people call us go uh, go back home, go back home. So that's okay. why we don't want to promote any hate and racism. That's okay. why we we removed it. Uh, that's it. Yeah. But but the stolen land part, are you saying, sir, just so I understand you correctly, it, it has been stolen yeah, from the indigenous yeah, we people? We don't want to speak anything. That's the fact. That's why. That's the yeah, fact that it's stolen yeah, that's land. The, yeah, that's the fact. We don't want to. Well, speak then shouldn't all of us be leaving Canada? Me, you, everybody. And if we're not indigenous? Pardon? I'm saying if it is stolen land, it's the fact we don't want shouldn't to speak you be leaving? Anymore. Shouldn't I yeah. be leaving? You must be you know? immigrant or your ancestors must be Correct. immigrants, right? Yes. So yes. that is what if we are immigrants, we got the opportunity, your ancestors or you got the opportunity, yeah. you came here the same way we came here. But we are still the best type of immigrants came here, we bring in the money, we, uh, we got the education here in their colleges, we worked here, we learned those skills they told us. So this is the thing we are working on. That is why we say, if people say yes, leave this country or go back home, that says no one is illegal on stolen land. Like we are not the ones who are illegal. If we are illegal, every immigrant is illegal. Yeah. This right. So that's my point. Shouldn't we all leave and give it back and to the indigenous? We are not giving any more words on this statement. If you have okay. any other questions, you sure. can ask us. Yeah, okay. please. Uh, we are Talk here. about being stuck between a rock and a hard place, eh, Mark? So what you essentially saw in that video is give us citizenship or we'll turn around and start attacking what your country is about. You can bet your ass that when he initially got here, they were singing Canada's praises in the hopes of scoring as many points as possible. But then when they come to realize that these points are not going to be attained and they will lead to nothing, they turn around and do the exact opposite and they start pissing all over what our country is about and our values. And no, it does not automatically get better with successive generations. The self-righteous victim mentality is something that becomes hard-coded into someone's DNA. For example, take a look at this video that was recently posted on social media by some kid who belongs to the first generation. You're not Canadian. All right, then where should I go back to? Ma'am, why were you aggressive to me? I'm being aggressive to you because uh, too many Indians are in Canada and uh, I want you to go back. Okay. Go back. But I'm, I'm go Canadian. Go back to India. I'm Canadian, ma'am. Your, your parents are not Canadian. Your grandma is not so, Canadian. So what wrong did I do to you? I'm just trying to understand, like, what wrong did I do to you? Personally, what wrong you, did I do to you? You hardly speak English. Je parle le français. I speak English as well. I speak French. Est-ce que vous parlez français? Do you speak French? I, I do. I speak French. On peut parler en français. Venez. On peut discuter en français si vous voulez. Je suis Canadien. I'm Canadian. Over Canada. I'm Canadian. There's too many students here. I'm not a student. You have every argument in the book. You so what wrong did I do? What wrong did I do to you? Be honest and tell me. What wrong did I do to you? You are Indian? I'm not. 
You're it, from India. Your parents, I'm Canadian. Your parents are from India. Your grandma is from India. So is that a crime? It's a crime when there's so many uh, Indians taking over Canada and Africans taking over Canada. So personally, what wrong did I do to you? I'm just minding my own day and going about and you show me the finger. Like, I did you no harm? I mean no harm. I come in peace. Peace, peace. So please uh, do not, please do not show the middle finger unprovoked to people. It's not right. It's un-Canadian to just harass people. Basically, by watching that video, what we witnessed is his side of the event. Here's a clearer picture of what likely happened. That lady, she might very well have instigated the situation. And she might indeed be the intolerant one. But here's the thing. This idiot wouldn't let up on her. He just kept hounding her only to perpetuate whatever stereotypes or suspicions she might have about him and his background. Now let's say she really was the instigator. There's no excuse for her behavior. Supposedly she gave him the finger unprovoked, which if she did in fact do that, that is indeed ignorant. So what do you do then? You tell her to go F herself. That's what. It's really not that hard. Instead, this creepy little D-bag decided to turn it into internet drama, well aware that she very likely isn't on social media herself and therefore can't defend her position or explain what happened in the situation. And then he proceeds to paint a self-aggrandizing, one-sided version of the story. And it gets better. He also called the police on her. While someone just randomly throwing out racial slurs unprovoked is unacceptable and admittedly very ignorant, just as ignorant is to treat this given incident like it's some sort of brutal, vicious beating. It just doesn't make sense. And this of course brings us right back to Marky Mark Miller. A large part of the reason why Canada finds itself in the mess that we're in right now is because the masses that are pushing their way in, they're very carefully studying our laws and policies. They're taking advantage of every conceivable freebie they can get their hands on. And this is why we're seeing exactly what you're seeing right now. We are enabling this unacceptable behavior. Not only that, we're enabling it in the most unimaginable way possible. Check out this leaked letter from an immigration consultant in which he seeks to get his clients every handout they presumably qualify for. I'll leave a link to that document in the show notes so you can read it for yourself. The long of the short is this. If that client does get all the benefits the consultant is seeking in that letter, they're going to be getting $5,150 per month. The average household income for a working family is $5,700. A household working full-time is only bringing in $550 more per month than that family that's milking the working family for a free living. That is the Canada Justin Trudeau has created. There is one little thing to chuckle about. Maybe I find it funny. Maybe it's just me that finds it funny. Maybe you'll find it funny too, but here it is. You no longer need to read this book to know what truly makes the difference between a rich immigrant and a poor citizen. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button and thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. The liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit 3oceans.ca. Once again, that's 3oceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.